Kubota's third function kit came from the dealer, had the caps that you see on the left there. I went ahead and started putting on the adapter so I could hook up my grapple, but I noticed I had actual two male fittings instead of a male and a female fitting that I needed for my grapple. So here the male fittings already installed. I did that lot the night before this, and then I went to Tractor Supply and basically purchased these guys. Um, this is a, these couplers, Pioneer couplers, male and female, it's cheaper to buy. Let's see the part number there, 40, 50, and then four. One half inch, 14 national pipe threaded fuel, NPTF. So the, the F means, so it had rated for fuel and hydraulics and stuff like that. Um, you saw the inside of the female there, it had a ball on it. This is the inside of the male. It has a ball on this end right here. Now the actual inside of these guys are a little bit tapered. And Parker, which is the place that makes these, recommend, recommends using some, a sort of piping dope to put these on when you go on there. We'll talk about that in a little bit more as we get these installed. This is what I bought from Tractor Supply here, just in case you're curious. That's half inch coupling, 3000 PSI. And then there's your one half. Um, this is the front of the tractor looking forward. So I, I kind of just set my phone on here so you can stare. Things I quickly learned when I was trying to take this cap off and something I learned with the other one. Um, you need to use two wrenches on these guys. Um, there is a, uh, you have the cap and then there's a retaining nut on the front end. If you just try to turn the cap off, you're actually gonna wrench your whole hydraulic lines a little bit and they're gonna move. Giant pain in the butt. Once these get these off, you see a little, you see a spot there on the gravel from where I took the one off last night and this one off. You're gonna get some hydraulic fluid come out. Um, just be prepared to catch that or just dump it wherever you normally dump things. Um, there's not a whole lot, just a small amount, but it does stay there a while. Um, coming from the dealer, did have this Teflon tape on there. Teflon tape isn't something you really wanna get in your hydraulic fluid. This is why I peeled it off. Um, it gets in hydraulic fluid and start plugging things up and then that just makes for a bad day. Um, now Parker, Parker recommends even if you're doing a first install on tapered threads like these, you want to go ahead and put a little pipe dope on and with the seating surface. I got the uh, a Teflon containing stuff. It basically um, provides uh, less friction when you're putting on the part and just kind of paint it on there. And you don't want to get it really where the hydraulics are going to touch. You don't want to be. You don't want to squeeze any of this down in there. Um, it's, I don't think it's as bad as getting the tape in there, but safer than not. Probably not want to get it down there a little bit. As you see me here, I'm cleaning it off a little bit. Make sure I don't have a couple of threads spacing at the end so I don't squeeze any down there. And yes, I'm wearing gloves. I, I, I don't like the way the, <laughs> the hydraulic fluid feels on my hands. I don't really like greasy hands. It's just personal preference. Call it what you will. Um, again, with there's a uh, Parker talks about when you put these things on. There's not really a torque spec. There's a turns from finger tight spec. You're supposed to put these things on finger tight, and then since we're using the half inch size with the 14 threads per inch, you're supposed to get additional two to three turns. Um, the reason they don't do a torque spec is since the tapered threads, you can actually get down in there and crush what you're putting on. It's not really good. Um, now here you see me with something I learned. I really should have put this one on first. I don't have the right tools to be able to actually put something like this on. So now I'm trying to move a wrench around and I'm hitting the loader arm, hitting the um, level rod there you see for the bucket level indicator is what it's called. 
So I'm having to kind of work a little bit more harder than I should have been. Um, do this again. Um, do the right hand side of the tractor first and then do the left hand side, the, the center one. It would have made my life a whole lot easier. I did can think about taking the mail off, but in the end I was able to get a pair of pliers and get everything worked around. So here's the finished install. You noticed in the install, I forgot to put the uh, the cover on there for the female and the red one, so I did have to squeeze that over there. Following the lines back, they go into the lever arms. Um, go up to the lever arms, and just like the rest of the hydraulic lines, they all pop out right here. It's kind of, it, it's hard to miss these things. They're just an eyesore sitting out at the end of those. Now we follow those two hoses right there, the little green caps on them, all the way down. And you'll get to a little part here that says no step. Well, that's actually a guard covering the solenoid valve and relays for the third function. There's two bolts on each side. You got those two on the bottom. And these two right here are kind of hard to see. I'll skip over that. Pop those off and bam. There is your solenoid in the back. It's the little black thing with the two caps on the left and the right. And right here are the two relays that actually get actuated by your switch up top to actual, actuate the solenoid. As we come up the control lever here, you got one button here when you turn the tractor on and you press it, it turns green, energizes the 12 volts going to it. So let's turn it green here. It means I got power down there, I can be able to use it. And then I have a thumb switch up top, which I briefly showed there, be able to control that. Now you should be able to hear relay clicking. The other clicking you hear in the background is the fuel pump clicking. But those relays are what actually controls the solenoids as you go through. When I got mine, the relays didn't work. So I had to replace, I had to start looking to see what was going on here. So I took off this whole top gray piece here. I basically slid the little plastic covers off the lever, levers there, pulled this bolt here, and then pulled the bolts on the side. And that allowed me to pop off, or basically pull up the whole little console there. You do have to be careful, the PTO is a wire, it's a switch, so it's wired. And here's the mess you get to see when you're on the inside, that whole conglomerate was. You wanna make sure that everything's connected or there it should be. There are two loose connections because this model doesn't have everything.